Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the wonderful outdoors. It's been a while since I've had this man. I think he's even grown taller yet. Carter Reed Exner on the channel with me. And today we're pike fishing. We're after a new PB for this guy and maybe me. We're going all four rods to start with for this guy. And if we catch one or two, we'll switch over a little bit here to maybe I'll even catch a fish. But right now, the whole idea of this video or the focus of this video is all about pike fishing. Teach you a little bit about the, the setups, where, when, what, all that stuff. So let's uh, see what we can happen. Like I said, right now, all the flags are set up. We've got two with the underwater camera, two without the underwater camera. So fingers crossed the ones that go off are with the underwater camera. But pike fishing, let's do it. Clayton reels the wrong way. But <laughs> you reel the wrong way. Nice, it's running, it's running. This camera's barely underwater too, or yeah, so it'll be good. First flag of the day. Make sure I record it on my head camera. I like it, I like it. Nothing on the camera, good. Took a little line. Yeah, I think you can just, I think you can give it a little bit and then you can hit it. It's good. Checks his drag first. Smart. He might come at you. Or he might have dropped it already. No. He's, he's there? Me, yeah. He's coming right at you. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Got my head camera on here. Feels small, eh? Looks small. Put this camera down until we get to the situation. Yeah, small one we're gonna take off here. Big one we're gonna go to the live wall with it. Now does it feel better? It's always hard when you're not fighting it. Whoa. What do you think the size? Uh, maybe 35 ish. Oh, he's calling to the inch. Looks like it was hooked funny. I'm just gonna fix the mic here a bit. You keep fishing. I'm just gonna get a little bit here so you can hear better. There we go. Okay. I saw it. Looks like it was kind of hooked funny. Looks like a dark pike. That's for sure. Oh no, it's big, Carter. It's big. It's uh, it's a big fish. Like it was wide. This one's going alive well. You felt really small. Off the yeah. Start. No, he just came at you. This is a big fish, Carter. Look at him move the water in the hole. No, no, it's a big one. It's a big one. Look at. Oh yeah, just wait. Go slow. Go slow. Okay, there it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, Carter, that's a tank. I'll grab it. Yeah, it's a big. One. It's a big one. Oh, easy girl. Easy girl. Easy girl. I want. I don't want it to back out. I want it to stay up here. Easy girl. Easy. 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 Cool. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. She's got lots of oomph left here. Let me get her up a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, Let's we'll get the hook out. Oh, Lord, this is a thick one. Oh, this is a thick fish. Uh, draw first, first. Fish is just chilling out in the live all here. Look at it just sit upright, perfect. This is a big one. We're gonna pull it up, show it off to the camera here right away, measure it, and back in. It's, my guess is like a 43, but like just a, a this, put your hands off that fish card. It's so thick on the back, like so thick. Unreal. Wow. Oh, this thing is huge, Carter. It's so fat. 
Unreal. <laughs> There's our thumbnail right there, Carter. Unreal. Wow, it's big. Big. 40, is it 40? Does it touch 44? 43 and three quarters? Like a hair. Yeah, 43 and three um, quarter. No, 44. 44? Right okay, yeah, right there. 44. Nice. Show it off one more time and get her back. Oh, this thing is a beast. Carter, look how fat it is. This is unreal. Unreal. So good. So good. Back home she goes. What a way to start the day off. That's probably the biggest one we catch today, Carter. Wow. <laughs> Go get your hands warm. Unreal. Well, what a way to start it off with a bang. 44 incher. Unreal. So now I've got three tip ups set up with Carter and I changed over the one that he just caught that fish on to my my handle. I say change over because Carter's actually left handed. So he is opposite from I am. I'm right handed. I fight the fish with the right hand on my rod and Carter fights the fish with the left hand on your rod. Usually whatever hand you are, like your dominant, whether you're right hand or left handed, that's the hand that should be fighting the fish. A lot of people think that your dominant hand should go on the reel, but it's actually the rod that brings in the fish. So it's better to get used to fighting the fish with your dominant hand with like on the rod. Anyways, we're gonna go over to a tip up here and we're gonna go over what we're using for a setup as in like the, the tip up itself. So these are the tip ups we're using. It's called the Finicky Fooler. Started using them last year for a tip up. I'm super happy with them. Obviously there's other methods. You can fight them hand over hand with a, with a thermal tip up that goes in the hole. I just prefer the whole rod and reel thing. It just makes it a little bit funner in my opinion. Obviously there's, you can do whichever way you want, right? Like it's up to you. It's just what I prefer. Hand over hand is gonna work a lot better when it's colder out because you can have issues with reels freezing. But keep that in mind also that if you are fishing outside that you wanna take care of those fish as well. But this is really, really simple. Your line here with the bail open goes under this little mechanism right here. And then the flag goes on this little mechanism right here. And when that fish picks up the line and takes it, it'll lift this up here and then this flag will slide straight off. Really, really simple, easy to use. There's a hook setter one as well, but I, I haven't really messed around with it at all. I've only played with the original Finicky Fooler. These little foam discs are also from Finicky Fooler. These slide right off keeps your hole nice and unfrozen or thawed out type of thing. And then in the past, I've always, I've taken these foam discs off, but I find the later the season goes, if you cut, if you, if you do your hole, like as in like you drill your hole and get that set up right away, it actually worked out really good. That last fish never knocked it off at all. Now, it is, does fit into the 10 inch hole, but sometimes when the fish's lip comes up a bigger one, you could catch this lip here and all it's gonna do is just kind of lift that foam off. Not a big deal though, just set it back in and replace it. These things have been really good. I also think too that it's better to have these on in case this something happens where something freezes and it locks up and this tips over, you could lose your rod down the hole. So the finicky fooler setup is what I've been running. And yeah, it's been really good. Oh boy, it's good. Oh, it just, it just flew out. Oh boy. Oh boy. Do I want the main camera? Nope, just that camera. Oh, he's still going. He's still going. Pull some line out here. Well, we've got another flag. And this is one of my flags. Clayton's flags. Okay, just gonna hit him. Cause if he's big enough, he's probably gonna be hooked. Oh yeah, yep. this one's got a little bit of, this one's got some weight to him. Oh yeah, ooh, 
Nice big head shake right there. I think we have another good one, Carter. I'm pretty sure. It's been like, what, an hour since our last fish? I think about that. And if we're only gonna get a couple flags today, but they're gonna be big ones, I'm, I'm okay with that. Can't tell for sure. I just literally come outside, checked all of the flags, and then went back in the shack and Carter's like, flag. Oh, oh yeah. My, I'm gonna switch to a head cover. Wow. My two favorite rods from Frostbite, the Drama Queen and the Mr. Big. Such a good pike rod. This one feels good. The question is, is it going to beat Carter's 44? Because a 44 is a giant. There's my leader. Oh, that's a fat one again. Stay up here, buddy. Stay, don't go back. No, he backed himself out of that hole. Almost had him. I saw his head for a second. This was on the underwater camera again. This is so good. I want to get as many eats as I can on the underwater camera. There's the head. Oh, this is a this is a big one. Hooks right there too. I don't think it's as big as Carter's, but it's a big one. Oh, there goes that. Foam mat. Come on, buddy. Get up here. Oh, that is a tank. Oh, that's a tank. You want to have me the pliers quick, Carter? It's okay. We can do the rest of the head. We'll, we'll go to the live wall with them, and then uh, we'll show them off there with the main camera. Easy hook out with this one right here. Okay, let's go to the live wall with them. That's a big one. Not quite as big as yours. We're going to pull her up, show her off, measure it, show her off one more time, and back, back down the hole right there. Carter's going to film it just going down the hole with the, you have the other camera. Yeah, I just film it going down the, that hole, just in case my head camera footage doesn't work. I have a tendency to start this and stop this all the time. Right now it's off, right now it's on. Okay, come here girl. Sitting here so healthy again. Easy, oh that's a, like a fat lip one. Oh, oh yeah, it's gonna show it off. We'll measure it first then. 41 and a quarter, 41 and a quarter. That's our second one over 41 inches today. Get that tail out girl, awesome, gorgeous fish. Not as big as Carter's 44, but I'll take it. That's for sure. Awesome fish. Awesome fish. Not many flags today. Just, just the big ones. Down to it. Nothing, nothing to it. This live wall like this, if you're gonna do photos with them or anything, just protects the fish so much. So during that fight, I was talking about rods. My two favorite pike rods to use, especially for a dead bait, a dead bait setup, and even jigging them as far as that goes. The Mr. Big and the, Dra and the Drama Queen, both from Frostbite. I have them paired with the 2500 Stratic that's got good drag or 1000 Stratic, 20 pound suffix uh, braid. And then I got on here a 26 pound wire leader from American Fishing Wire, AFW. It is a seven by seven strand, nylon coated camo color really really easy to tie on the hook end here which i use i use number two where'd that go where'd the hook go I use number two barbarians from vmc i've been using these for a couple years now big fan of that treble hook and then on the bottom end here i just tie a saltwater loop knot i think another name is a non-slip loop knot i got about 18 inches of uh, a wire here and then I tie a uni to uni at the top to connect my braid. I know some guys run fluoro and that's fine, but I feel like if the, if the hook is gonna go into the pike's mouth, you're better off with a wire leader. A big, big bait with a fluoro is fine, but I find, and I have had in the past with even 80 pound fluoro, if a pike's tooth gets caught in that middle of that fluoro, you'll end up slicing it, splicing it right down the middle. So I've been using wire now for a lot of years. I'm okay with the single treble too. I feel like if it's a smaller fish and it doesn't have the whole bait in its mouth, I don't wanna deal with them anyway. A big fish like that with a six inch Cisco, he's going to eat the whole bait as you've probably seen on the underwater footage. And I also like to hit them right away. As soon as I get to the flag, I'm gonna hit them instantly because the bigger fish is gonna have that hook buried and we're not looking to gut hook them or hook them deep. So there's no reason to let it run out very long. If I get there and it's slack, I'll even reel up till it's tight and then I'll hit them. A lot of times they'll take it and they'll run out a bit and they'll stop and they'll come right back out at you. So I'm just reeling up to get, to get the slack out and as soon as it's tight, 
just give them a pop. You don't need to give them too hard of a hook set either. These hooks will bury themselves. I sharpen mine regu regularly, regularly. I can't talk sometimes, it's the way it is. But barbarian hook, number two, 26 pound American fishing wire, 20 pound suffix 832 ice braid, Stratic reel Shimano. This one is this one right here is a Mr. Big, but I also like the Drama Queen too. But like I said, both frostbite rods. They're they're such a, a very good hike rod. I was gonna say if you're only going to dead bait fish and never fish any jigging style, I'd get the Drama Queen. But if you're gonna mix it up a little bit, I'd get the Mr. Big. Flag. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I heard it. Did you? You heard it? I'm out checking flags and, well, oh, it's just peely. Nice. Got him? Yep. How's it feel? Um, I'm gonna go to head camera mode here. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, it feels. Feels decent, hey? Yeah. Oh yeah. It just feels like it's one of those days, hey, this is only our third flag, yet it feels like, uh, not sure. I wish I had a looked a little bit sooner. I did see it there for a second. But today feels like one of those days where it's like, we're not getting many flags, but we're getting all. It's just a, it's just a nice one. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a Carter fish. He's caught on the hole this way a bit. Keeps some tension, I'm just gonna back him up a bit. Okay, pull up, yeah. Okay, oh, oh, easy girl, easy, easy. This would be a, this would be a Clayton fish. This isn't a Carter fish. Okay. Let me get the hook out real quick here. And then uh, we'll just get them right back. You probably don't even want to get your hands cold for this one, hey? I'm sure. No. No, you're good? Okay, I'll show them off quick. Right there, just like a nice, about a 32-ish, 33-ish. Nice fish. We'll get it right back without even measuring it at all. Okay, well, that's a small one for the day, hey? We don't, want, we don't want those. Spoiled, right Carter? Spoiled. So we're running two different baits down there today. One being, oh, it's got some ice on it, but this is a herring. It's like five, maybe six inches type of thing. I like a little bit smaller bait this time of year. Maybe March, I'll start to run some bigger baits. And then the other ones we have on, these ones are still in a package here, but this is a large Cisco, they call it, even though they're, they're smaller ones. This is from Campbell's Catch, Martinsville, Saskatchewan. Got these just from Cabela's, but they're kind of around the, that same size-ish there, as you can see, about five, six inches. These have been my go-to baits for a long time. Now I'll run a little bit bigger herrings at time too, but herring and Cisco, Lake herring is a, a, a type of a Cisco, I believe. It's just a different a different name or classifies a different name. And you can see they're, they're a little bit different too. They're a little bit shinier, but those have always been my go-to for the last couple of years. Cisco's herrings, what I'm doing is I'm just taking the one treble hook here and I'm just putting it right in the top. Actually, Carter, do you wanna hand me that rod real quick? That's there. We have a spare rod always kicking around and kind of swap them out as we go. So Carter, bring me that rod and I'll put uh, the hook in the top and show you how I hang them. Okay, so that single treble I talked about earlier, sometimes I'll take a sing just one of the singles and I'll go right around that dorsal fin there and I'll just hang it like that. Or sometimes if the bait's a little bit more mushy, which these ones are usually pretty good. I thaw them out the night before, take them to the lake perfectly thawed. If the baits aren't thawed when you get there, they'll float and they'll also, when you get down there, they'll turn into a popsicle because when they're, when they're uh, frozen on the inside, that ice will work its, its way out. So sometimes another way too, I'll take the two hooks here, I'll kind of put it in the top, just hardly, hardly hook it. And then I'll have one treble kind of just hanging there. 
I leave them mostly horizontal. Sometimes I'll lay it on the bottom. Sometimes I'll keep it in the middle of the water column. Sometimes I'll keep it higher. The deeper you are, the better. It's it's better to keep the bait a little bit higher. I find they'll definitely silhouette that bait. If you're like in 10 feet of water, run it like three feet underneath the ice. That bait will be silhouetted up there when they look up and they'll see it. The bigger the bait too, you can hang it a little bit higher. Or if it's really really big, sometimes some sometimes right on the bottom is another way. You just gotta kind of see like what the pike are up to that day. That's where the underwater comes in super handy, watching them on the underwater camera and seeing what their mood is. Lots of times these bigger fish will just come in real slow. They'll look at the bait and they'll just hardly suck it up and then they'll swim off slow. And when you get to a flag and it's ripping, that's usually a good sign of it being a bigger, or sorry, a smaller one, just because it ate the bait, it might've felt the hook and it's, it's out of there. But a bigger fish, a lot of times, like I said, they'll just close and they'll just swim away nice and slow and that line will be a nice consistent speed out. So those are the baits that I like. Again, single treble. And yeah, it's it probably doesn't matter how you hang them in that sense. In the, in the end, it's just a pile of meat. But when that bait just sits there ever so nicely, they can't resist it. Well, it's 445 right now, I think. Uh, 439, so not quite. We've only had one flag pop since the last little talk I did here about the baits. And the plan was to kind of catch a fish, talk about something, catch a fish, talk about something. But I want to talk about location a little bit. And if we catch another fish, great. So this could be the end of the video or we could end with the fish. We still got about another hour of fishing, 45 minutes of fishing type of thing. So there's a, an app or a ma an app that I like to use called the Venza Maps. And I'll put it up here on the screen of the actual map. It's uh, Angler's Edge Mapping uses it. And I've been running these maps for a little bit now on the lakes that they have mapped in Manitoba. They have one in Saskatchewan, they have a few in Ontario, but primarily focus in Manitoba right now. These maps can like help you locate the fish or where to fish, not necessarily locate the fish, but give you ideas of where to fish. But like, I'll put up a screenshot here I took of an area right now. And there's a little bit of a, a deeper trough, like a 10 foot hole it shows there. And then it's got like a big flat there. You also see a lot of, uh, a little bit deeper area to the south of that too. It's like an old river channel there. These fish will cruise this river channel and come up on this flat all the time. So right now we have our shack set up kind of in the middle and we got our four flags kind of all, all around us, right? So we don't want to cause too much noise either on these shallow flats. Right now, this we're on right here, it's about five feet underneath the surface, but you can find these fish a lot of times anywhere from a foot, two feet to 15 feet. The biggest thing is a shallow mud flat. There's lots of life on a mud flat, which I've talked about some videos earlier when it's up at Viking Lake Lodge, about there just being so much life on these flats. They'll have, I've got, I've got video here of crayfish cruising around all the time, little perch, minnows, etc. right? The bait fish, the crayfish brings in the bigger fish. Some days you come to a spot and you're gonna catch a bunch of smaller pike, right? Well, yay big. Some days you'll come here and you'll catch big pike. I find that a lot of times the, the, the fish you catch to start with will kind of set your tone for the day and what's traveling in that area. Pike are known to kind of gang up in the certain sizes, size classes. Not to say you can't catch a big fish and then catch a small fish, but if you're catching a bunch of these, you're not necessarily gonna catch a big one, but if you're catching a big fish, there's a good chance there's big fish in that area for the day. But shallow mud flats allocated close to deeper water is usually a good thing. And then something with not a huge, huge drop off either, something where it stays pretty consistent, I find to be the best, but allocated close to deeper water or somewhere deep water as an access for the fish to come up and come down from. But those, those shallow mud flats are a really good place to start in January, February, and into March even. You don't always have to be by a feeder creek or anything like that too. There's lots of fish cruising that aren't necessarily near the creeks. Maybe in March, you could be closer to the creeks. You know, they're gonna kind of gang up in that area a little bit because they're gonna start to think about their spawn, but they're putting on a little bit of uh, egg mass right now. They're trying to eat Cisco's, like I said, crayfish. Today, herring too, right? Even though herring's not something that naturally occurs in most of our lakes, not that type of herring anyway. They're trying to put their feed bag on a little bit to gain some egg mass to take them into the March april period so shallow mud flats i've preached it lots before and i'll preach it again but sometimes even as shallow as like one foot underneath the ice it can be really good well sadly that'll wrap it up end of days no more flags they got smaller as they went big big no bigger big 
medium and then no flat iron and then no fish so they kept getting smaller but that's the way she goes thanks for this guy for hanging out with me again for the day i know he hasn't been on many videos lately but he's been hard at work doing his thing but he has been fishing a little bit too he's been catching some nice fish this winter but thank you everybody for watching don't forget get outside <laughs>